Genetic engineering involves changing an organism's DNA to give it new traits. You'll hear about this often talking about genetically modified crops or genetically modified organisms, but we've actually been doing genetic engineering for centuries through crossbreeding and stuff like that. So that's even considered genetic engineering. To understand how some genetic engineering works, you need to know some vocab. One of the terms is recombinant DNA, and you can really break that down to recombined DNA, and it's DNA that contains genes from more than one organism. An example here is this plasmid, which is bacterial DNA, has foreign DNA inserted into it. Plasmids are loops of DNA and bacteria, and they are separate from the bacterial chromosome. During bacterial conjugation, the plasmids are what actually will leave through the pili and go and share DNA with other bacteria. We use plasmids in genetic engineering because they're easy to cut with restriction enzymes and they can hold on to foreign DNA. They become what we call a vector because they will hold that DNA and carry that information. So the way to create recombinant DNA is to use restriction enzymes to cut both the plasmid that you're going to insert the DNA into and the foreign DNA. If you use the same restriction enzyme, it's going to cut at the same restriction site, which will leave the same sticky ends, and that gene you're inserting will just insert nicely into the plasmid. Another vocab term is a transgenic organism. Trans means across, so across the genome. This organism has one or more genes from another living thing inserted into its genome. So for example, in this picture, these mice have a gene inserted from a jellyfish that allows them to glow under black light. One of the coolest ways that we use transgenic organisms is transgenic bacteria, specifically E. coli it can actually be used to produce human proteins, um, like insulin. And so insulin, if anyone has diabetes and they take insulin, that insulin is actually manufactured using bacteria. So what happens is the gene is inserted into the plasmid, the gene that says, hey, make insulin. That plasmid is inserted into bacteria, and then bacteria express the gene. What's great about this is bacteria reproduce so much, you can get a ton of bacteria producing a ton of insulin without much energy. And so that's one of the reasons that we use bacteria to produce insulin. GMO stands for genetically modified organisms, and it's an organism whose genetic material has been altered using genetic engineering techniques. Genetically modified organisms are pretty common in agriculture. We use transgenic plants that are genetically modified. These GM crops have a couple uses. One of the uses is they can be resistant to pests. So instead of spraying toxic pesticides on a plant, we can actually insert a gene that allows the plant to be naturally resistant to bugs, and then we don't have to add that pesticide on top of it. Another way we can genetically modify crops is to improve their nutrition profiles. And so this picture is showing this rice on the right is called golden rice, and it's actually um, enhanced with beta carotene, which helps with eye health. And in countries that were having some struggles with eye health, they actually introduced this golden rice and it improved the health of the people's eyes in those countries, which was really great. There are a lot of benefits to genetic engineering, but there are some concerns as well. Although the concerns, none of them we really know for sure about right now. They're more so questions. Um, there's been no proof of harm yet, but we're kind of just, you know, wondering if there'll be harm in the future. So one of them is the possible long-term health effects of eating the GM foods. Will our bodies react okay to genetically modified foods? You know, usually evolution kind of happens relatively slowly. Humans evolve as food evolves, but now we're really evolving that food much quicker. Is that going to affect us? Or how are these plants going to affect ecosystems or biodiversity? Biodiversity is one that's actually a pretty big concern because if we are you know, genetically modifying these crops and planting one type of crop, we can have some issues arise from that. 
Another thing we can do with genetic engineering and our knowledge of the human genome is we can do gene sequencing to determine the order of DNA nucleotides in genes or genomes. The genomes of several different organisms have been sequenced, which is really cool. Um, it's also cool to look at the number of base pairs in them because you would think, well, humans are most advanced. We probably have the most base pairs, but actually the amount of DNA has nothing to do with how advanced an organism is, which shows you right here. Since the lungfish has way more DNA than a human does and it is not advanced at all. The Human Genome Project is a project that has sequenced all of the DNA base pairs of the human chromosomes. It's been analyzed, it has analyzed DNA from several different people, and it's still working to identify and map human genes now. So the whole genome has been sequenced, but now we're trying to figure out what each of the genes are. And we actually know a lot of them, and we can pinpoint a lot of the genes that cause diseases, and hopefully, you know, in the future, we might be able to help people, and we'll have less diseases in the future. Another thing we can do with gene technology is genetic screening. This is the process of testing DNA to determine a person's risk of having or passing on a genetic disorder. This is something that a lot of people do as part of their family planning, which means when a couple decides to have a child, if they know there's a history of disease in either of the parents' family, they can actually get tested and see if they have a high probability of passing that on to their future child. These tests can also be done once a woman is already pregnant on the fetus to determine if they're going to have a disease. This gel map shows that genetic screening can be used to detect a version of muscular dystrophy because of the missing bands on the gel. Genetic screening can be used to test for genes related to an increased risk of cancer, heart disease, and other disorders. An example is a disease-causing gene called the BRCA1, and it's been linked to breast cancer. If a person has this gene, they have an extremely high risk of getting breast cancer. And so you can get tested for this. It's called BRAC analysis. And if a woman finds out she has this disorder, she can actually get an elective mastectomy, which means removing the breast tissue, because if there's not any breast tissue, then you can't get breast cancer. And this has actually saved many lives because if you have the BRCA1 gene and you do get breast cancer, it's often extremely aggressive and hard to treat. Another thing we can do with genetic engineering is gene therapy. This is the replacement of defective or missing genes or the addition of new genes into a person's genome to treat a disease. This is something that will hopefully explode in the future and hopefully we can treat a lot more diseases. Cloning is a process that creates a genetically identical copy of a gene or of an organism. The name, the cat named Cece for copycat or card and copy is the first successful clone of a cat on the right and the original cat is on the left. Mammals can be cloned through a process called nuclear transfer. This is where the nucleus is removed from an egg cell and the nucleus of a cell from the animal to be cloned is implanted into the egg. Then the egg will divide and in theory become a new organism. Cloning has potential benefits. One of the cool benefits that I hope you know happens in the future is organs for transplant into humans. One of the risks of getting an organ transplant is rejection, but if we can make organs from the person's DNA and from their cells, then they won't reject that organ. Another thing that we could do is save endangered species by cloning some of them and breeding them. Of course, you're gonna have a smaller gene pool with that, but that might be better than not having the species at all. I don't know, that's one of those biology questions that's hard to answer. There are some concerns about cloning though. It has a low success rate, and the clones are often imperfect and less healthy than the original animal. We're not really sure why. And then, of course, that decreased biodiversity, like what would happen with saving endangered species.